Last year, I built a 15 meter Moxon antenna for field day. Having learned my lesson, I decided to do something a little bit easier and approachable. So I'd like to introduce to you my six meter Moxon antenna. Last year for field day, I built a Moxon antenna for the 15 meter band. The antenna called the Black Widow was a beast. And while 15 meters didn't quite perform how we were expecting to during field day last year, it really did perform well and made it, definitely made a difference in the tough band conditions that we experienced. Now I did make a couple of videos on that antenna and you can check them out down below there. Uh, I learned a lot about Moxons in building that antenna. And I have to also credit a Chuck KK6USY for his assistance in refining uh, my antenna design. Now for my new six meter Moxon, I'm taking what I learned from building the 15 meter antenna and I'm putting together something that is not only inexpensive and lightweight, but it's really perfect for exploiting the six meter band uh, come this field day. Now six meters, you know, is the magic band. It can be quite fickle and it will open up with barely any warning and signals will travel for thousands of miles, taking strange convoluted paths along its way. Uh, being on the top of the solar cycle, those openings are becoming more and more common as e-skip presents itself, along with the other more common uh, tropo ducting. Well, suffice to say, the summer months are a hotbed of six meter activity. Now living in the upper Midwest, six meters can be challenging and a directional antenna really can benefit you in helping to enhance your signal and to pick out those signals that really tend to, to uh, congregate in uh, the uh, southeastern and south central parts of the United States. So let's discuss uh, what a Moxon antenna is uh, and I'll show you how to build your own a six meter Moxon out of a few common parts. The Moxon antenna is named after its creator, Les Moxon G6XN. It's best described as a rectangular two element uh, Yagi antenna. Now I said rectangular because uh, both the driven element and the reflector elements, the ends are folded inwards. So this antenna overall takes up less real estate, up to one third less than a comparable dipole antenna. If you had lightweight spanners uh, to your rectangle, now you've got something that's easily rotatable and um, and, and can be directed towards the signals you wish to uh, catch. Typically, six meter moxins will have about five and a half dBi of forward gain and a front to back ratio of up to 25 uh, dB. Uh, that's when it's ele elevated to its optimal height of about 18 feet. They also exhibit a 50 ohm impedance at the feed point. So these can be directly uh, fed with, uh, with coax uh, without any need of transformers or some type of uh, feed point matching system. To make this project more approachable, three of the parts are 3D printed. Uh, the hub, the hub adapter that goes onto a painter's pole, and the uh, feed point mount for the uh, UHF connector. I used PLA Plus to print these parts. Uh, this is okay for temporary use, but if you're going to think about installing this permanently, I would use something uh, more uh, permanent like PETG or ASA. All of my 3D printed parts are available online at Thingiverse if you want to tackle this project yourself. Let's get started with the 6 meter Moxon antenna. For parts, we will need four 48 inch by 3 8 inch fiberglass fence posts, one 3D printed Moxon hub, one 3D printed hub adapter, one 3D printed feed point center, an SO239 chassis connector, 20 feet of 22 gauge wire, number six by one half inch machine screws, nuts, and washers, eight small ring terminals, and some string trimmer line. Once the parts are assembled, we need to calculate the wire lengths for the antenna. I use the MoxGen calculator that can be found on the ac6la.com website. This is a small Windows-based program that will give you the wire lengths necessary for the antenna. There are online calculators too, but this program can also generate an easy NEC file so you can do some additional modeling. This is handy if you want to visualize the takeoff angle and front to back ratio of the antenna. 
The key in building a wire antenna is to subtract some wire length for velocity factor. The velocity factor is the difference between the actual length and the electrical length of the wire and it can throw off your resonant frequency. To correct the velocity factor, you will need to shorten the antenna a bit. In building wire antennas, I like to cut the wire to actual size and then use the excess wire due to velocity for tie-offs and to make minor corrections. With most PVC insulated wires, the velocity factor will be 96% or 4% shorter than actual length. Here's my dimensions of the antenna corrected for velocity factor. I'll cut the antenna wire to the calculated length and then shorten it when I lay the rectangle out. Now when we build this antenna, I want to warn you not to make the same mistakes that I did. So keep watching to see where I went wrong and what I did to correct it. Now the first step in building our Moxon antenna is to assemble the spreaders. I've got my hub here and uh, four of these uh, fiberglass uh, rods. And the rods are to insert into the hub uh, like so. Um, if, it's, or if they're a little loose, you can use a little tape or something to stiffen them up. Um, if they're a little tight, you know, you just sort of just sort of wiggle them uh, in there. It'll, they'll eventually fit. Uh, so they have the four uh, spreaders assemble like that. Um, now these are 48 inches long, so they're going to be too long for the um, the Moxon rectangle, which needs to be uh, 85 and a half inches long on the wide side and 31 and an eighth inches on the narrowest side. So we're going to have to trim a little bit of this material off. And uh, doing the calculations, uh, come up with uh, the spreaders from the center point of the hub to the end need to be 45 and a half inches. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the center point and I'm going to cut actually at about 46 inches. Um, just giving me myself a little bit of extra space because after I cut these with my rotary tool, I'm going to notch the ends so that the wire can um, f uh, fit inside that notch. And that's what will hold the, um, the wire portion of the antenna in place. So let's uh, measure these spreaders. Uh, we're going to cut them to length and uh, notch the ends. So I'll be using a rotary tool for that. Is the uh, spreader unit for the for the the antenna uh, pretty simple uh, to put together nice thing about a six meter antenna is it doesn't take up a whole lot of space uh, so it doesn't require mass of spreaders so we can easily um, kind of manage it get your get your arms around it uh, next up what we're going to need to do is we're gonna have to cut the wire and then we can uh, fish it around the um, the antenna itself now a moxin is a, a considered a two element Yagi antenna. So on one side will be the, um, the UHF connector, uh, the feed point, and then the, the two legs will go out and then they'll come around to the end and um, like that, fold it over. And then the same with the uh, directing element. It'll be folded over and then it will, but it will continue all the way to the back uh, to the other side. Now, in order to make these taut, um, what we're going to do is um, use um, just a little piece of um, string tr trimmer line to um, 
connect the two pieces of wire, the director and uh, the, uh, the radiator uh, together so it's one contiguous loop and everything feels uh, is fit taut around here. That's one of the little tricks I learned from <laughs> Chuck KK6USY. Uh, what he does with his Moxes antennas is to use that uh, something a super lightweight and string trimmer line seems to work really well for that. So uh, we're going to need a string trimmer line about two inches in or we're going to need a gap about two inches in length. So we'll put that together uh, using uh, the string trimmer and then we will cut our wire and uh, finish up the antenna. For the antenna's feed point, I have this. Uh, this is just a little a 3D printed frame. Uh, this is what it looks like off the press. And uh, on it, I mounted a UHF SO239 connector. And then just uh, I ran a couple of wires to the, um, from the center pin and, and the ground side to these lugs here, which is, this is where the, uh, the antenna is going to attach to. This is the same uh, center that I built for the uh, 15 meter Moxon antenna. It's not that heavy actually. Some people were concerned about the weight of this and it's, 30, it's, it's under 35 grams, which is surprisingly lightweight. So it doesn't add that much stress to the uh, overall uh, antenna. For this antenna, we're gonna need uh, two pieces of wire. Uh, the reflector and the driven element. Uh, the driven element is um, dimension A plus dimension uh, B twice. So A is 85.47 inches, B is 12.98 inches. You add those together and you get a total of 111.43 inches. Uh, for the reflector element, uh, similar to that, uh, 100, it's going to be uh, 85.47 for the long part, and then this D section is going to be 15.91 uh, added twice for a total of 117.29. Now, one thing to, one, two things to consider. Uh, wire gauge does make a difference with Moxon style antennas, and we're, and we're used the MoxGen program we calculated for a wire size of 22 uh, gauge, uh, which is which is the type of wire that we're using here today. Uh, and the second thing to consider is your velocity factor of the wire. Uh, insulated wire typically has a velocity factor of 4%. So you're gonna wanna multiply these numbers by 0.96 to get their true dimensions with velocity factor. Uh, that figures out to about, that reduces the length of these wires by approximately five inches uh, for the six meter antenna. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut for the full length because I need a little bit of extra wire. It's for um, tying off onto um, my little um, spacers here and whatnot. So I'm gonna need a couple inches for that. So I'm gonna measure for entire length. And then when we assemble this antenna, I will and, and tune it, I will tune for velocity factor. So we'll probably have to take a couple inches off, which is okay. It's all, you're all, when you're building an antenna, it's always better to leave things a little bit long and trim down than to be too short and have to add wire. So remember when I said, when I'm gonna calculate my wire, I'm gonna cut for velocity factor, or actually I'm gonna cut for actual length, and then trim for velocity factor. Uh, one thing I did not do, and this is a fatal mistake I made last year on my 15 meter Moxon, is that I, in my spreaders, I did not account for the reduced length of the wire in the in the spreader itself otherwise you know the shorter wire because of the velocity factor so when i spread the wire out on the four spreaders it don't it don't fit uh i got a gap here so i recalculated uh the length of my spreaders based upon 
their intended length on um, what their length should be uh, based on the velocity factor of the wire. So um, they should be, 40, instead of 45 and a half inches long that I cut them for, they should be 43.6 inches long. So what I'm gonna do is take the spreaders out of the hub and I'm just gonna cut one and three quarters inch off the bottom of each leg here, making them just a little bit shorter. And then they should, um, then everything should cross your fingers, uh, <laughs> match up according to the uh, correct wire length um, adjusted for velocity factor. I put the antenna on the meter and um, according to the uh, dimensions that I used from the MoxGen calculator, I, um, it's telling me that um, this antenna is resonant or it's got its lowest SWR at 48.21 uh, megahertz and I built this antenna specifically for 50.313 uh, megahertz, the FT8 portion of the six meter band. So we kind of missed our target by about two megahertz. It's, uh, the antenna is too long, so the elements would need to be shortened up a little bit. I'm kind of torn on doing that here, uh, because like I said, this antenna I built for field day. And I got a feeling that um, the buildings and whatnot in my backyard is, there's probably something interacting with it, and it might be throwing things off a little bit. And if I get it into a different location, up higher, and in the free space, I got a feeling it's probably gonna uh, look a lot better on the meter. So um, since it's been built to spec and I'm, I'm confident with these dimensions, I'm getting an SWR of about a little under two to one across the entire six meter band. I think I'm good to go. I'm gonna see if I can uh, make a contact here in the backyard with it. Uh, but otherwise uh, we'll do, you know, come field day, uh, when we're ready to put it on the air, we'll do any kinds of final tweakings or adjustments to get that perfect match uh, for a field day weekend.